They are only children, but here in this isolated village in central Afghanistan, they sing of a struggle and achieving their rights. They wanted to go to school and now they can. They are celebrating the opening of the first ever girls' school in their village. Five million children have so far returned to school since the collapse of the Taliban in late 2001. And the University of Kabul goals now make up to half proportion of the students. In elections, women are now allowed to vote, and they make sure they do even in some very remote areas. In Parliament, women constitute more than a quarter of this newly elected house. Malala Ijo is the most popular MP in Afghanistan. He has as many time taken a stand against the ex Mujahideen fighters who dominate the country's new assembly. This video of the Afghan parliament shows the day of the parliament's first session in more than 30 years. Joya denounced many of those seated around her, condemning the presence of what she called the criminal warlords. Many MPs beat their fists on their desks and furiously shouted her down. As she left the parliament, she says she received death threats. These leaders should be in prison, not here. They have killed and destroyed under the name of Jihad and Islam. Jewish fellow women in peace like Shinkai Karo Hale says women's voices are beginning to make themselves heard above the complaints and opposition, and they need resources to back them. Shinkai, who also runs a women pressure group, believes despite a lack of attention towards the empowering of Afghan women, there has been some development in women's participation in public life in the last five years. At least there is a door open for Afghan women again. Uh, this is a good opportunity for Afghan women because now the international community is also interested to support Afghan women or they want to address Afghan women's issue. Like CB, uh, we um, develop Afghan uh, constitution. Uh, there's so many things uh, or change or happen in favor of women. Uh, even like if you see in uh, it's a parliament. Now we have uh, more than 25% of women uh, through quota system inside the parliament. This is like one of the positive uh, signs. And now we can see women uh, on the street, on the market, and in the factory, or uh, working area, on a non-governmental organization, inside the government, or as an ambassador. These all positive things. Uh, came to uh, to our country. Here on the streets of Kabul, while some women still wear the traditional burqa hijab, which was compulsory on every woman under the Taliban, the face of Freshta is known to everyone. Freshta takes pictures and talks to women about their problems. She is more than just a photo reporter. I am policing uh, this man uh, dominated Afghan society with my camera. When I am on the road taking pictures, I am surrounded by dozens of people who seem to feel jealous uh, to see a woman taking pictures. That means as women we have to work hard to ensure our place um, in all fields of life. The exhibitions of her work in Kabul pull large crowds of both men and women. Unfortunately, I see that uh, all uh, uh, developments, women are still uh, suffering more than others. For example, uh, this picture, very poor and even during the day. She used the lamp in her dark, tiny little room on her face, shoes she has gone to do many ups and downs. United Nations report says violence against women is still widespread in the conservative and male-dominated Afghan society. 
Maryam Aslam of the UN Agency for Women Development says almost all of the women in Afghanistan are subject but to violence. But unfortunately, when it comes to violence against women, the figures we see in Afghanistan matches the world figures. Abuse perpetrated by a member of a woman's family or someone known to her is widespread. From the study, from the 1,327 cases, 82% of the total violent acts were committed by family members, including intimate partners. The UN report has alarmed Afghan women groups. In this gathering, they have invited women from the region and other Islamic countries to a three-day seminar to share the experience of coping with what they call a deep-rooted dilemma in Afghan women's life. Maybe 90% of women in Afghanistan still suffering from family violence. The, the major gap we have uh, is in our legislation, first of all, because uh, family violence is not defined as such within the legislations. And the second thing is uh, this workshop or workshops as such will not help if the whole system is not moving. Very much trying to like, push the government, judiciary, uh, parliament, and encourage them to end the culture of impunity. In this village in northeast Afghanistan, just over a year ago, a young girl of 18 was stoned to death for suspected adultery. They took her and killed her. She was broken into pieces by stones. The order of Bibi Amin's death was passed by the village clergy and according to villagers she was taken to this riverside where she was showered by stones by hundreds of these angry men until she died. Amin's death was followed by the killing of two women in the northern city of Baghlan. Meanwhile, a well-known female television presenter, Shaima Rizai, was killed in Kabul, and soon after, a female poet was murdered in the western city of Herat. In Kabul, women are seen increasingly in the workforce. In this tailor's shop, these are mostly widows and young girls learning to support their families. For many of these women, an ability to earn a living is perhaps the most essential tool to give women power and freedom at home and in the society. Women come here and learn skill and we also share each other's concerns and solve our social problems. But it's only in the capital Kabul and in some major cities the Afghan women in rural areas suffer out of the range of the cameras and of the society's radars. And despite their new school, these girls know already that the real equality with men guaranteed in the constitution of Afghanistan is still a long way off.